Many were called, but few were chosen. When London Weekend Television announced they were looking for super fit members of the public to appear in a new sports entertainment television series, the response was immediate and impressive. Over 2,000 hopefuls nationwide from all walks of life attended sports centres up and down the country, where they were put through a telling and exhaustive circuit training course. Contenders were expected to cycle one kilometre, row 500 metres. The men had to bench press 40 kilograms 30 times, and the women 20 kilograms 20 times, and finally run 800 metres and all against the clock. For some, the effort was just too great. Exhaustion. Nerves and dehydration were the main causes of failure to complete the course. But for others, a catch of breath, a quick drink, and they were ready for the next round. As many chin-ups as possible in one minute, or as many push-ups for the girls. From over 2,000 tryouts, just 24 contenders went forward to the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham, where inside we can meet four of the contenders who passed those grueling tests. First is Nicola Borden, a dance teacher from Poole. Vivine Radigan, a legal secretary from London. Weininger Owen, a videotape editor from Stoke Newington. And Jeremy Nelson, a professional yachtsman from Streatham. Tonight face the ultimate challenge, the might of the gladiators. Jet. Saracen and Scorpio coming to you from the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. Here are the presenters of Gladiators, John Fashnu and Ulrika Johnson. Welcome to Gladiators. Tonight, our four contenders will face the challenge of our gladiators in a series of six different events. Using their skill, speed, strength, and stamina, they'll hope to gain as many points as possible to give them an advantage in our sudden death eliminator at the end of the show. The winner of that, of course, will hope for a place in our semi finals. And of course, the winners of our semis will go on to meet the gladiators in the finals, where the highest scoring male and female contenders will share a grand prize of £10,000. Let's meet our first female contender tonight. She is Nicola Borden. <laughs> Terrific little jump there, Nikki. Welcome. Hello. Listen, what, you're a dance teacher. Yes, that's right. What sort of dance do you teach? Um, tap, ballet and modern stage. And so you must be used to uh, these large crowds, are you? Um, yes, not quite as big as this, but yes, fairly big. Yeah. What have you done before in your time? I gather you've been in a pantomime. Yes, that's right. When I was 13, I did a pantomime. Which one was that? Cinderella. Well, have we got a ball for you to go to tonight. <laughs> Off to your atmosphere, Nikki Borden. <laughs> And the second contender in the female section is Vivine Rattigan. <laughs> now, Vivine, you look like you're ready to go. Now, you're a legal secretary. What's a legal secretary doing here on Gladiators? I wanted to do something different and challenging. Well, you're certainly doing that here. Well, this is the time, if ever there has been, to take the law into your own hands. Vivine, Ooh. off to your atmosphere. Thanks very much. Yeah. Event one is called Atlaspheres. This huge round cage behind me is our atmosphere. Now, our contender will climb inside the atmosphere and attempt to score as many points as possible by rolling it across the arena floor and the four scoring pods. It hits a sensor, and that triggers a plume of CO2, like this. That scores three points. So sit back and hold tight, and let the action begin. Now, 
let's join our commentator, John Sachs. Thanks, Ulrika. Let's take a look at our contenders' stats. Nikki Akeem, bodybuilder, came fifth in the Ladies' National Championships at 60 kilos in 1990. Backing up against Panther, fairly evenly matched in terms of height and body weight. Panther holds several titles. A former Miss Britain, Miss Europe, Miss Universe. She's competed in track and field events. Levine Radigan, a powerful athlete, managed 43 push-ups in the qualifiers. She says Atlaspheres is her favourite event. She'll meet Flame, the only gladiator not to have been a bodybuilder. She maintains her 35-25-35 figure with aerobic workouts, weight training and dancing. Our referee is John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Highly respected Olympic team coach at the Ladies last girls, five Olympic Games ready! and was very involved at the last games in Barcelona. So the girls get set for 60 seconds of rocks and shocks and atmospheres. Rolling down the ramps, they can't make a play on the pod closest to them. Flame, a tremendous start there. She rolls towards Ravine. Oh, a deflection off Panther there. That's a nice aerial view. We can see Nicola making a break on pod four in a red atmosphere. There she is, Panther doing a good job keeping her out. Now it's Ravine. Making a break on pod one. Hasn't got it over the middle. You must get it over the middle to get the three points. Nicola. Going for four. She gets it cleanly over the middle. Hits the center. That's three points. Oh, Panther gets a tank buster collision with Vivine. Bet that rattled her cage. Running out of time. Gladiators did an excellent defensive job, hence the low score. Nicola, the only one picking up points. And when those atmospheres stop, they take a lot of strength to get the Roni again. As we can see, Vivine in trouble on pod one there. She can't quite get it onto the pod. Mickey, well done. You got through it, but uh, you fell over to start with. Yeah, um, I just knew I had to get up, otherwise I was going to be like a hamster in here. Well, Vivine, what an unusual sight. A legal secretary behind bars. I mean, this has got to be the first. Did you find it hard? It was hard. I mean, make no bones about it. These things are hard things to push around. Yes, they are. You've got to have a lot of leg power, but I was just unlucky. Vivine, thanks very much. Well, Flame and Panther know they did a good job. This capacity crowd well behind our two Iron Maidens. <laughs> Scores after our first event. Nicola, three. Vivine, nothing. Now it's time for a real clash of the titans. Please give a very warm welcome to our first male contender. He is Weininger Irwin. <laughs> welcome. How you doing? Listen, with a name like Weininger, I'm delighted to find somebody else with a bizarre name. Where did your co yours come from? Well, as a matter of fact, um, at the time of my birth, my father was reading a book by a German author, and his, name, his last name happened to be Weininger. So he said, yes, that's the name of my son. So he named me Weininger, so... That's terrific. I won't tell you the secret behind my name. <laughs> Listen, best of luck. I'm sure everyone will get to know your name by the end of the program. Off to your atmosphere. Yeah, <laughs> and the second male contender is Jeremy Nelson. Hello, Jeremy. Now, you're a professional yachtsman. What does it take to be a professional yachtsman? Um, initially, a great deal of training, a lot of deck scrubbing, but once you get there, lots of suntan oil. What sort of exercises do you do to keep fit? On the actual boat, press-ups, a lot of running, that sort of thing. So, overall, you should be fit for gladiators. More than ready for them, just bring them on. Lovely. Over to Atlasphere, Jeremy Nelson. Well, Jeremy, you drew the shortest straw and the biggest gladiator, Warrior. Look at these incredible stats. Jeremy giving away eight stones, and Warrior tells me he slimmed down for the series. There's Weininger's stats. He spent 12 years in New York, where he used to watch the American Gladiators twice a day. I only have one thing to say to the Gladiators. Remember David and Goliath. Uh, I'm a little bigger than David, so watch out. And Shadow's a lot bigger than Goliath. How about this for a Gladiator? And if we look at Shadow's stats, Whining are giving away six stones. Shadow maintains that awesome physique with a daily intake of 10,000 calories. 
Here's Jeremy Stats. His ambition is to do the Ironman triathlon in Hawaii. He may not be big, but he's fit. I'm not intimidated by the size. The guys I train with are bodybuilders, so I'm used to it. And I get called spaghetti legs and all the usually insults being so much smaller than they are. So it doesn't worry me. That's not a thing that bothers me. In the games, obviously, there's a, some of the games, it's a size that makes a difference. But in other games, it's speed. And that's where we have the advantage, so it balances it out. Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! Where all those gladiators of old would run for the exit as they saw these guys rolling towards them. Oh, Shadow powers into Jeremy. What a collision. There goes his no-claim bonus. Weininger making a move on four. Doesn't get his atmosphere directly over the middle. No contact with the centre in the middle means no score. There's Warrior coming in on the blind side. Weininger shaken but not stirred. Makes another move on four. Gets it this time. Three points. Jeremy finds some space. Got a breakaway situation. Gets a good roll on pod one. Straight over the middle. Picks up three points. Shadow's right behind him. Warrior boxing Weininger, but remember, he can't contain him for more than 10 seconds. Jeremy makes a final move on two. Gets the goal. Oh, with just half a second on the clock. Let's see that breakaway again as Jeremy finds the space and squeezes in on pod one. And look how close Shadow was. Great goal. It's a great support for our contenders and gladiators alike, and the scores after one event in the men's contest. Weininger three, Jeremy six. Event two is the wall. Just look at it. 36 foot high, and our contenders only have 60 seconds to climb from the bottom to the top, which is where John is. John with a great view of the action to come. Nikki Borden harnessed up, and scuttling up behind her will be Scorpio. Scorpio says the wall is her favorite event. Her brother is a mountaineer, so you could say it runs in the family. There's her stats. And there's Vivine who after a 20-second start will be pursued by Jet. He looks ready for takeoff. A former National Gymnast squad member with those looks and those stats, she's Gladiator's very own Wonder Woman. Contenders will start on my first whistle. Gladiators will start on my second whistle. Three, two, one. So it's 60 seconds to get to the top. Nikki and Vaveen get a 20-second start. And this can be a very daunting experience if you've never done it before. Ten points if you get to the summit. They must get both feet over the top. Five points if you keep contact with the wall for the full 60 seconds duration. If you lose contact, contenders will be disqualified. Here come the Gladiators. A vertical takeoff from Jet as she pursues Vaveen and Scorpio's on Nikki. Scorpio's caught up, Nikki. She strikes out on the left leg. She slipped. Nikki slipped her. Scorpio sent flying. Jets coming in on Vivine. She's got her leg. Reverse thrust. Vivine has great upper body strength. If she can hang on in there for another 12 seconds, she'll pick up five points. Jet gets a better grip. She can't get her off. She's going to make it. There's the whistle. What a great effort. Both contenders managing to keep those gladiators at bay. Five points each. And to show you just how awesome scaling this sheer rock face can be, here's the view from Jet's helmet camera as she closes in on Vaveen. And Vaveen wasn't the only thing that nearly came down. Vaveen, well done. You hung on there to the very last second. I had no intention of letting go. At all. <laughs> So how do you feel? Great. You looked a little bit cautious right at the beginning. What made you drive on? Well, I just felt her coming behind me, so I had to go. <laughs> the scores after two events, Nikki's on eight points, Vaveen five. 
Now it's the men's turn to face that wall. Jeremy Nelson and Weininger Irwin. Jeremy told me that he'll be focused completely on the job ahead and will try to forget that the Hawk will be coming up behind him. And that'll be difficult to do. As we check the Hawk's stats, a former Mr. Wales. He's not only powerful but agile with an irresistible smile. As the last-minute checks are made on Weininger's safety harness, he tells Wolf how it's going to be. But lucky for Weininger, Wolf's on a lead. He doesn't look too amused. Let's check the Wolf's stats. He's certainly no sheep in Wolf's clothing. For Weininger's sake, let's hope it's not a full moon. Villiers, ready. Contenders will go on the first whistle. Gladiators will go on the second whistle. Three, two, one. Jeremy and Weininger get a 15-second start. Remember, they must maintain contact with the wall. Once they leave the wall, they are eliminated. And they both make a good start there. Good lines up that wall. Here come Hawk and the Wolf. And Jeremy and Weininger can't see them, but they can certainly hear them. Remember, for making it to the top, 10 points, or five points for hanging on for the full 60 seconds. And they're motoring up there. Look at them go. Winding is nearly there. Got to get your feet over. They hit the summit simultaneously, earning a maximum 10 points each, and leaving Wolf and the Hawk behind. Jeremy ecstatic. Woo! Rock and roll, yeah. Weininger. Congratulations, that was a close one. I got one message to the wolf man. I'm not Red Riding Hood, and I'm not scared of the big bad wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Whoa, that is a direct challenge. That is a challenge to the wolf man. Big teeth you've got. I don't think he appreciated being reminded about that little Red Riding Hood episode. Yeah, just lucky I'm in a good mood. Weininger moves up to 13 points and Jeremy's on 16. Next event is the Danger Zone. Here there are four stations and four different weapons. For every weapon fired, the contender scores one point. If he hits the gladiator's target, he scores ten points. And our first weapon on the first station is the crossbow. At station two is the bazooka. And let me tell you, this is a very heavy piece of equipment. Not quite so heavy, but still as deadly. On station three, the mortar. Now, if our contenders manage to make it to station four, they'll be faced with this rather mean piece of equipment, the rocket launcher. If a contender gets to the last station and he still hasn't hit the gladiator's target, he can climb through this perspex cylinder and punch a target lower down. But one word of warning, after 10 second intervals, each station is going to self-destruct. And after the station is blown up, the contender can't use that weapon. There's Nikki, who will have to face the firepower of Phoenix, who will be launching tennis balls at over 100 miles an hour at her. Phoenix, an expert Thai and kickboxer, represented Britain in the Miss Universe competition. Contender, ready! Gladiator, ready! Three, two, one! So Nikki Borden gets a flying start into the danger zone. Our 60-second game of hit or be hit. First weapon, the crossbow. The station will self-destruct within 10 seconds, whether you fire it or not. There's the bazooka. Oh, better shot that time. Nikki will get a point for each weapon five. Weapon three, the mortar. Trying to pick her off there, but it has to be a direct hit. Deflection from the floor or weapon won't count. Next, it's Rambo's favourite, the rocket launcher. Goes a little low. Heads for the cylinder, but it's a hit. Phoenix picked her off. The whistle's gone. But Nikki delighted with her four points. That was so fast. Let's see where Phoenix got her. As she leaves the rocket launcher, she keeps low, but Phoenix wings her arm. Phoenix proving to be a hot shot top gun. 
Looks like she's got a few young admirers in the audience. They salute her with their glad hands. Watch out, I'm coming to get you. Yeah. Vivine Madigan throws down the gauntlet to Phoenix. Contender, ready. Gladiator, ready. Yeah. Three, two, one. Phoenix goes to battle stations with that tennis gun, trying to get a hit on her. If she is hit, her body armor will soak up the impact. Levine also has her BEPs, her personal eye protectors. That'll uh, shield her from any head blows. Weapon two, bazooka. Zeroes in on the target. Bullseye! A direct hit. That's a full ten points. Good shooting. See that Phoenix fly. So the ladies after three events, Nikki's on 12, but Vivine shoots into the lead with 15. Winding the warming up, and he readies himself to face a volley of shots from Saracen. The crowd chanting, there's only one Saracen. If you look at these stats, Weininger must be glad of that. Built like the armoured car of the same name, great top body strength, and a deadly Ready shot. Up. Ready? Gladiator! Ready? Three, two, one! As Weininger steps into the danger zone, it's all about wits and hits. A point for each weapon fired, but he must fire within 10 seconds or the station will self-destruct, disarming that weapon. Weapon two, the bazooka. Oh, good shot! Now he faces a salvo from Saracen as he makes his way across the weapon three, the mortar. Oh, Saracen rattling the windscreen. Weininger's last weapon is the rocket launcher. Oh, that was close. 25 seconds left on the clock to get through the cylinder, which has holes in the top of it. He's got to punch the target. He does. He turns on the lights, picks up his 10 points. And Saracen's left high and dry. Good scoring. Oh, Jeremy, a little wiggle there. I wonder if he intends dancing around the danger zone. Contender, ready. Gladiator, ready. Three, two, one. Jeremy, a pro yachtsman, facing a broadside from Saracen. At 29, he's not too young to remember Bob Monkhouse's golden shot. Ten points up for grabs here instead of a holiday. That's if he hits the target. Otherwise, it's one point for every weapon fired. Oh, what a roll. Great audition for the professionals. Another point there for the mortar. Saracen giving a pretty good impression of lethal weapon three there. Jeremy returning fire with the rocket launcher. Too low. Jeremy makes a dive. Oh, with plenty of time in hand to punch that target. Good job. Saracen gets another free flight. Pleased with it? Very pleased, ecstatic. These guys just can't handle it, you know? Well, you got some very, very valuable points. You needed those. I did, definitely. I look forward to the next one. Well done. Right, thank you. So after three events, our point-scoring powerhouses pile on another 10 points each. Weining at 23, Jeremy 26. So still to come, three more exciting events before our sudden death eliminator at the end of the show. So don't go away now. Join us after the break to watch our contenders continue their struggle against the might of the gladiators. <laughs> back to the National Indoor Arena. The next event is called Swing Shot. Yes, and this event probably looks a lot simpler than it really is. As you can see, our two contenders are poised on their platforms 15 feet above the arena floor, and they're attached to shock cord. Now, the object of this game is to bounce down onto the floor, up towards the central pole, to try and retrieve one of the three different colored balls. Now, yellow equals one point, blue equals two points, and red equals three points. Then it's back to their platform to place the ball in their basket. But bear in mind, of course, that on opposite platforms are two of our gladiators waiting to stop them. Well, the girls are all set to swing their thing. Here we have the flame and meet for the first time, Lightning. 
she's an accomplished gymnast. 23 gold medals to her name, and her bodybuilding wins include the EFBB British Championships. Swinging up against our gladiators, Nikki Borden, a professional dance teacher. She teaches from three-year-olds upwards, and we see she can certainly fling, but can she swing? Contenders, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! It's swing shot, 60 seconds of mid-air suspense. Swing out, sisters, a yellow there by Nikki. Vaveen gets a yellow as well. It's back to the towers, pop them in the baskets, and a point each. Here they come again. Nikki up, she gets a blue. Here comes Ravine, up she goes. Oh, blocked out of play there. Well done. And another yellow for Nikki. Nikki's favourite event, this. Back she goes. Ravine's least favourite, I might say. Blocked out by Flame. Some good defence there. Shock cords are adjusted to the girls' individual body weight. Oh, another two points for Nikki. Oh, Ravine having no luck there. Back she comes. Up for an... Oh, she missed the blue. We're running low on time. Will they get another chance for a swing? Vaveen comes up, bounces high. She's got a blue. This is going to be close. It's going to be close. It counts. Justin on the half second there. And as you can see, the traffic got busy up there. Nikki and Vaveen did well to pick off those yellows. And after four events, they're all square, 18 apiece. Now it's time for the guys to swing their thing. And this event should stretch them to the limit. Weininger looking to make up some ground. He's three points behind Jeremy. Jeremy, our professional yachtsman. And there's the impressive sea fin, which he sailed up from Palmer last year. Here he is on board. Breaking out the secret supply of rum rations. He'll need his sea legs for this event to face our gladiators. The Hawk and Wolf. ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! Swing shot, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Oh, look at that! Wolf and Hawk, body check, Jeremy and Weininger out of the ballpark. Remember, no headshots, no kicking, no deliberate knocking the balls on the pole. Up goes Weininger, it's a blue! Two points in the basket and back down again. Where are the gladiators? There's a point. Yellow. Here comes Jeremy. Yet to score. And he's blocked out. Weininger has three points now, which evens the overall score. Anything else now is a bonus. Picks off a yellow. Great blocking by Hawk. Jeremy having trouble getting back up the tower. Here comes Weininger. It's a blue. Where are those gladiators? Up he comes. Oh, great defensive play by the Wolf, but he strips the cylinder. That was unintentional. Here comes Jeremy. Time up. Winding to six, Jeremy nil. And this just shows how impressive Weininger's performance was, considering the great defensive play of the Wolf and Hawk. They completely closed Jeremy down. So, after four events, Weininger, the comeback kid, comes from behind to take the lead, 29 to 26. Event five is Hang Tough. Yes, that's right. Hang Tough is the name of event five. And as you can see, these rings are suspended from the ceiling, four feet apart and about 10 feet from the arena floor. Our contender will start from that end of the playing area and has to swing across the 50 feet over to this platform by using these rings. And they only have 60 seconds in which to do it. Now, uh, if they do make it over to the Gladiators platform, they'll pick up a maximum of 10 points. If, however, when the whistle has been blown at the end of the 60 seconds, they've made it into the halfway line, into what we call the scoring zone, they'll pick up a valuable five. Well, Nikki and Vivina all equal at 18 points each. A chance now for Nikki Borden to go in front. That's it. She can outwit the Phoenix.
So, 60 seconds of Hang Tough, Mickey's least favourite event. Ten points to get to Phoenix's platform, five points for Hanging Tough in the scoring zone. She'll be looking to give the Phoenix a wide berth. The vice like leg grips of Phoenix strips them right off the rings. No headlocks, no striking out, and if the worst comes to the worst, no tickling. Oh! A fancy right turn by Nikki sends Phoenix down the middle. This is good tactics. She's got a blue ring there. She's now in the scoring zone. She can hang in there trying to fend Phoenix off. She'll pick up five points. She's got it back to Phoenix. Rule one, never turn your back on a gladiator. Well, I don't know about Hang Tough. This is more like Hang Loose at the moment. I think Phoenix may have left her attack too late. Here she comes. She's caught Nikki, but she's out of time. Takes it down, but Nikki picks up five for Hanging Tough. Yes, yeah, she's got the five points. Look at the replay. It's a textbook takedown by Phoenix. But just leaves it too late. Shame for her, she left it so late. The Veen's next. She may be 11 and a half stone, but she has tremendous upper body strength, which you'll need in this event. Contender, ready! So all that stands between Verveen, 10 points and victory are 55 rings and a flying Phoenix. Phoenix proving she has the ability to take uh, people down, but this time she'll have to make her play a lot earlier. And Verveen has opted to go down the left leg. She's going well. She's into the scoring zone, she's got a blue. Oh, she's got bigger ideas! She's going for the platform with a full ten. Phoenix struggling to find a ring. All Verveen has to do is hang tight for a few more seconds. I think Phoenix has left it too late again. Verveen hanging on for dear life. She gets a hand on her. It's all too late, though. for being delighted. And she drops 10 feet, happy landings. Over to John for reactions. Vivian, congratulations. How do you feel? Great, absolutely wonderful. Well, you certainly did very well. Did you expect to do quite so well? Yes, I did. Oh, you did? <laughs> Quietly confident. Well done, thank you very much. Thank you. Both contenders did well in that event, picking up five points. And after five events, there's still nothing in it. It's all even. Nicola 23, Verveen 23. And first up in the men's contest, Weininger Irwin. Born in Hackney, spent 12 years in New York, now he's back in London. And he'll have to tough it out against Saracen. Saracen says he hopes the contenders are hungry because he's going to make them eat Matt. Contender, ready! Gladiator! Ready! Three, two, one! In Hang Tough, Weininger can earn 10 points for getting all the way across those 55 rings to Saracen's platform, or pick up five points for hanging tough in the scoring zone. The rings four feet apart, 10 feet from the ground. Good start by Weininger. He's got a blue. He's halfway there. Searching for another ring. Out of nowhere, Saracen's got him. Takes him down. Another one bites the dust. A relieved Jeremy now with a chance to catch up and take the lead. Our 60-second high-speed chase in mid-air requiring arm power and upper body strength. 
Jeremy only needs five points in this event to go two points in front of Weininger overall. He gets to Saracen's platform, picks up a full ten. That gives him a good lead. Jeremy gets the blue ring. He's in the scoring zone. Moves on. Finds himself one ringed. Oh, again out of nowhere. Saracen strikes. He's on him. 17 stone of Saracen. He can't hang on for 18 seconds, surely. He can't shake him off. He must be careful not to infringe the takedown rules or he'll be DQ'd. Oh, another one bites the dust. Sportsmanship as well. How That's do you it. feel? Terrific. If I had more training, he'd be done. I think you just took on about 18 stone on your back there. No problem. I enjoyed it. I'll do it again anytime. Great stuff, Jeremy. Thanks very much. Neither contender making an impression on Saracen. No score. So after five events, there's no change. Weininger 29, Jeremy 26. Event six is Duel, the ultimate in contact sports. Both contender and gladiator are armed with pugil sticks. Victory in this event worth 10 points. That's if Nikki Borden can knock Panther off her platform, which is 12 feet high. Five points if she lasts the full 30 seconds. Three, two, one. No stepping across. No dropping your pugil stick. That's instant DQ disqualification. They've got four feet of diameter on those platforms to work with, so good balance essential. And it looks like Panther making all the aggressive moves. Upstairs, Nikki happy to defend here. Panther giving it all. It's hammer time. Nikki happy to stick it out, pick up five points for going the distance. It's just like handbags at 20 paces out there. There was a lot of defending going on there. You didn't make one aggressive move, but uh, you still get your five points. Um, Panther just didn't give me a chance to get any shots in at all. All I could do was to, to just defend. <laughs> all right. We'll have to settle for that, but uh, hope for better next time. Well done, Nikki. <laughs> well done. Bavine is up next. On guard. And has a two-stone body weight advantage over Panther. Remember, Jewel requires balance, timing and upper body strength. Three, two, one. 30 seconds to dislodge Panther from the platform. A KO worth 10. Standoff going the full 30 worth 5. Levine straight away pressing home a weight advantage. Stick 7 feet long. Wide circumference making it tough for the ladies to hold on to. Oh, then he had her over then. One. Two. Oh, look at those roundhouses. Panther says that's enough of that, thank you. Taking a real hammering. Five points. If that helmet didn't fit before, it sure does now. Vivine dominating Panther, landing some real haymakers. Again, the girls are all square. After six events, Nicola 28, Vivine 28. Next up, it's the men's bout, and look at the size of Shadow. 266 pounds of a contender's worst nightmare. Contender. Ready! Weininger may shake his head, but there's no going back. There's a big angry gladiator with a pugil stick 16 inches away on the other platform. Just like gladiators of old, jousting mano a mano. Terrific mismatch in body weight. Shadow straight down to work, gets the first shot in. This could be the longest 30 seconds of Weininger's life. Ten points if he can knock the shadow off his platform. More realistically, he'd be happy to last the full 30. Oh, merciless. They drop the sticks or step across, instant DQ. Look at the work rate of Shadow. Working high, working low, and just relentless. Blow after blow. That whistle, music to winding his ears. It's all over. Just look at this awesome onslaught. Have that. And that, and some of that. Oh, and downstairs, bet that brought tears to his eyes. Jeremy's next. Did that awesome shadow scare him? Not at all, no pain, no gain. We guarantee the pain, but can't guarantee the gain. 
Oh, that was early. John Anderson blows the whistle. He stopped it. I think Shadow was a bit previous. Shadow, you must wait. You must wait for the starting whistle, or there will be a disqualification. So Shadow gets a warning from the referee. Tender, ready. These guys look pumped up and ready to go to war. Look at that. Looks like we've got a real fight on our hands. Well, now we'll find out just how wise Jeremy was in baiting the Shadow. I know if I was giving away 100 pounds in body weight, I wouldn't want to upset him. Hammer time, Shadow puts together a frightening combination of blows. He's so fast, it's impossible to defend. Oh, that's a new one. Oh, look at that. We're going for the knees, and why not? Anything to get them off. Oh, Jeremy loses his stick. He's lost his balance. One second on the clock, it's all over. After six events, Weininger has extended his lead over Jeremy, 34 to 26. Our contenders don't have to face the gladiators anymore, but they still have to face each other. And that's in the Eliminator, after the break. Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena, where the atmosphere is incredibly tense as the Eliminator approaches. Remember, this is sudden death, and whoever wins this will earn a place on our leaderboard. Vivian, you're not looking forward to this one. How do you think you're going to do? I'm just going to go all, all for it. What, for everyone? Yes. Well, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Nikki, after six gruelling events, you're still neck and neck. Yeah, um, it's going to be a tough one, but I'm going to go out and see if I can do it. Well, this is when all these months of training come in handy. Let's hand you back to John Sachs. Thanks, Ulrika. Out of the Gladiator's frying pan into the Eliminator. Nine obstacles Vivine and Nikki will negotiate. It's 20 feet up the cargo net, then over, down the slide, nine feet of scramble sheet. The ladies will then go on to the overhead ladder. Should a contender fall, there's a 10-second penalty. Then a bit of a twist, a dash across the rolling beams. Onto our second cargo net and up to the platform. And it's a wild ride down that zip line, 90 feet onto those crash mats. Then a sharp left, and hopefully with enough energy, a punishing scramble up the awesome Travelator. Make it to the top, grab the rope, make like Tarzan, through the paper burst, and home free for a place on the leaderboard and a winner's medal. Contenders ready! Yeah! You will start on the whistle. Three, two, one. Both Nikki and Vivine have proved themselves as worthy contenders, and the fact they have 28 points each tells us it's going to be an exciting eliminator. This is their ultimate challenge, the mother of all events. Vivine down the slide first, up the scramble sheet. Here comes Nikki. This overhead ladder is energy sapping. If she falls, she'll incur a 10 second penalty from the moment she hits the pit. Vivine flying across onto the rolling beam. Up the cargo net. You can see Nikki in the distance there. Across the rolling beam nicely onto the cargo net. Well, Vivine's going to make it to the platform first. She grabs the zip line for a 90-foot free ride to the ground floor. And those crash mats. Good landing. Nikki's on the platform, don't write her off. Bavine has to face the awesome Travelator. This is like going up the down escalator, but at full speed. Oh! She hasn't made it. Nikki's hot on her heels. Bavine slips again. The very bottom of the Travelator. Nikki makes a run up. Vivine down for the third time, all the way for Nikki. Come on, grab the rope. Just through the paper burst. What an exciting eliminator. It just goes to show it ain't over till it's over. Vivine going to have to dig deep into that courage bank to make it to the top. Here she comes. She's not going to let this beat her. What a terrific contender. Remember, there are no losers on gladiators. There's only the winner and the runner-up. 
Veen completes her eliminator. Great contender. Nikki, well done. That was terrifically exciting, let me tell you, because you managed to catch up with her in the end and beat her. That's right, I was dragging behind and I came down the zip line and I could see she was struggling on the, on the travel aid. I thought, you know, that was my chance. Was well like, done, oh. well done. Let's hear it for Nikki. Well, Nikki, you gave it all you got. Well done. Thank you. How do you feel? Tired, bruised and sore. <laughs> Well, you were leading right to the end. What happened? I just lost my foot in. Just bad luck, unfortunately. Well, never mind. Thanks very much, Vivian. <laughs> so, Nicola Borden is the first name to go on to the leaderboard in the ladies' competition. In the men's, Weininger is eight points in the lead. He gets half a second start for each point, which means those eight points give him a four-second head start on Jeremy. Well, Jeremy? Yeah. You've got four seconds to make up. How do you think you're going to do? I think I'll do well. Wayne's going to give everything he's got, and I'm certainly going to give everything I've got, too. Any plans? How are you going to go about the course? I've not got much choice, really, have I? <laughs> up and over. Like it. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Jeremy! Weininger, you've let your eyes run over the course now. It's time for your body to do all the work. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel very confident, and I love and I accept challenges from any form and every, any aspect. I'm looking forward to this. Good, that's what we want to hear. Good luck to both our contenders. I'll see you at the end, whatever happens. Over to John Sachs. Thank you, Ulrika. So Jeremy is going to give it the up and over and Weininger is going to let his body do the talking. Contenders, ready! <laughs> Weininger, you will start on the first whistle. Jeremy, Jeremy, you will start on the second whistle. Three, two, one! All Jeremy can do is watch him race away. Both contenders have proved their spirit and courage. They'll both give it 100%. Jeremy's off. And it'll be Weininger first down the slide. And he can't be complacent about his lead. Now, the men use the hand bike. And he's given it plenty. Look at him pumping it. And Jeremy giving a good account of that hand bike as well. Weininger flies across the rolling beam. Springs onto that cargo net, and Jeremy hot on his heels now as he joins him on the cargo net. And as we saw in the ladies' eliminator, anything can happen in this event. The ultimate test of a finalist determination, the great equaliser. Weininger comes down the zip line. Splashdown! Gets set for the travelator as Jeremy hits the crash mat. This one could go down to the wire. Weininger up to the top. The boy from Stoke Newington grabs the rope and swings to victory. Geronimo! What a great time. Here comes Jeremy, a courageous runner-up. Come on, spending his last ounce of energy on that travelator. Come on, Jeremy. Oh, didn't know where he was going then. Grabs the rope. Heads for home, a great effort. So Weininger goes on to the men's leaderboard and sets the standard for future contenders. Weininger, you attacked it with tremendous aggression, but I suppose that's what got you here. <laughs> Definitely. Determination, a lot of stamina, and a lot of strength. Is anyone here in the audience supporting you tonight? Well, my mother's here tonight, and uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to send out some greetings to my mother. Thank you. She's, she's my own personal gladiator. Oh, brilliant. Isn't that lovely? Well, Jeremy, you were quietly confident with yourself that you yeah. just might be able to make up those four points. Right. What happened? I got beat. <laughs> I came here had a really good time. I enjoyed myself. What can I say? Good competition, good spirit. That's what it's all about. And that is what it is all about. Thank you very much, Jeremy. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Good competition, good spirit, great sportsmanship as both contenders show mutual respect. Join us again next week for the ultimate challenge, the might of... Brace yourselves, brand new American Ninja Warrior starts next before TNA Impact 2016, tonight at 9, here on Challenge. Thanks.